Three Donkeys in Heaven Written by David Kossoff The First Donkey When I tell people, as I tell you, that now comes a story about three donkeys in heaven, it has some odd effects. One of the oddest is that many people who have always said they don't believe in heaven are rather offended at the thought that donkeys should be allowed in. Very illogical. If heaven is for people who are rather nice... Why not for donkeys, who in the main are nicer than people? Most animals are. Don't you agree? Anyway, three donkeys, spending an afternoon together in heaven. They'd all been there a very long time. Centuries. By accident, they discovered that they'd all come from the same part of the world and had arrived in heaven at roughly, give or take a few years, the same time. Very pleasant and interesting for them. They were lying in the shade. One of them was telling his story, and the other two were listening, quietly, as perhaps you are. I had a number of masters, said the donkey, but I remember one better than I do the others, not because of him so much, although he was a very kind and gentle man, but more because of one or two strange things that happened during the time I worked for him. He was a carpenter, and he worked and lived in Nazareth. Not a rich man, not many possessions. I don't think he would have bought me, but there'd been a Roman order that made it necessary for him to go to Bethlehem. A census was being taken. Anyway, he bought me so that my mistress could ride there. You see, she was going to have a baby, and pretty soon too. And she had to go to Bethlehem too. It was a Roman order, and nobody ever argued. So we went. It took a long time. I trod as soft as I could. When we got there, it was late at night, and the town was bursting with people. The inns and rooming houses were packed. No room anywhere. The last innkeeper my master asked at least tried to help. He said his stable was dry and warm, and we could spend the night there. I was a bit worried for my mistress, in her condition. I mean, I've slept in stables all my life, but she was rather a refined, well-brought-up, quiet sort of person. My master settled her down as comfortably as he could. He loaded the largest manger with the hay and straw from all the others, and she lay on that. Well, I must have dozed off. The thing that woke me up was the sound of men's voices. At first I thought it was the Romans, but then I saw it was a crowd of shepherds. They were excited. Some were praying. On the manger was my mistress, and in her arms her new-born baby. As far as I could make out, these shepherds, in the middle of the night, had been told by a whole army of angels that my mistress's baby was something very special. They were told where to come and see for themselves, and then to spread the word that this baby, born in a stable shared by me and two other donkeys and a cow, was going to change the world. Well... People did get excited, but not for long. Mind you, one good thing, one or two people helped my master find somewhere decent to live in Bethlehem till my mistress felt stronger. They lived very quietly. No miracles. You'd have thought that exciting night had never happened. I'd nearly forgotten it. Well, about six months after that night... We had another big night. Not shepherds this time. No, not shepherds. More like princes. There were three, all from different places far away, all with servants by the dozen. Camels are fine old to do. 
they blocked the street. They also spoke of angels, and a great star in the sky which had guided them, and special signs, which, because they were all three of them very wise men, they knew had meant that our baby was special. A saviour, they said, a king, they said, greater by far than King Herod. When I heard that, I knew they'd be trouble. The next morning the wise men had gone, and by midday so were we. Seems God told my master to take the special baby, and the baby's mother, and the baby's donkey, and get away fast, because King Herod was cross. We went to Egypt, I remember. The old donkey looked at the other two. There must have been something very special about that baby, he said. Though I must say, in the six years I was with them, I never noticed anything. The Second Donkey This is the story of the second donkey. He and the third donkey had listened very quietly while the first donkey had been speaking. And after a little silence he began... I can't think, he said, how it is we've never met before. We've all been up here in heaven nearly two thousand years. We all came from the same part of the world, and we all arrived here, give or take a few years, at the same time. Remarkable. The other two donkeys nodded. Mind you, said the second donkey. Heaven is a big place, but all the same. Now, he said to the first donkey, what if I tell you that I also worked for a carpenter and in Nazareth? Remarkable, said the first donkey. Tell us more. Well, said the second donkey, as far as I can remember, we had no babies born in stables, or excitements with shepherds and wise men and bright stars like in your story. We lived very quietly indeed. When I was bought, my master had a number of children. I remember five sons, I think. Don't recall their names. One stays in my mind more than the others. Very quiet, considerate sort of boy, gentle, like his mother. Her name, I think, was Mary. Well, I'd been with the family for about three years, and this boy was now twelve or thirteen, and old enough to go with his parents on this cheerful yearly trip to the great temple in Jerusalem. Thousands went from all over springtime, to celebrate something called the Passover. It took days, but nobody hurried. Families and friends travelled in groups, slept under the stars, and generally made a happy holiday of it. Very pleasant. The boy talked of nothing else for weeks before, and he did his full share in the preparations for the trip. Very practical boy he was. He could bake bread and cook and knew how to bargain. Clever at his lessons, too, I remember. Anyway, the day came and off we went. A great crowd of us, half of Nazareth at least. Everyone knew everyone else pretty well, and the children's fun and their parents' exchange of news and gossip didn't stop. People shared their food and saw to it that the old ones were looked after. Not everyone had a donkey, so we were shared too. Well, it took some days, but we arrived, and next morning all the twelve-year-olds in their clean clothes went off with their dads to the great temple. Very special day in their lives. Boys and dads. Nice sight. 
I forget now how long we were in Jerusalem, but it was not until we'd been on the road back for a whole day that anyone noticed the boy was not with us. Could easily happen in that great crowd of relatives and friends. Well, of course, his parents were worried sick, so back we went to Jerusalem, searched everywhere. Nowhere we found him. In the temple, in the part of the temple where the elders and the wise men and the teachers lived. He'd been with them for days, and I rather gathered that they were tickled pink with him. It appeared that he was not only very knowledgeable on their subjects, but seemed also to have some special thing about him that warmed the old men, and the time had fled by. My master and mistress were a bit overawed by the old scholars, but were shown great courtesy by them. The boy said good-bye to them all, and thanked them for their wisdom and lessons. And the oldest and wisest of them used the same words back to the boy. Remarkable moment, that was. Then the old men left us. All very nice. But let's face it, the boy had given his parents a lot of worry. He'd been a bit thoughtless, and his mother told him so. She and the boy were very close, and she was puzzled. Why did you do it? she said. You made us very anxious. The boy's reply puzzled her even more. Me too. He wasn't saucy. He pointed to the great temple and said, That is my father's house. I must be about his business. Then he kissed his parents, and we all went home to Nazareth. THE THIRD DONKEY This is the story of the third donkey. He and the other two had met in heaven, and had found out that they had quite a lot in common. They'd all three lived and worked in the same part of the same country at roughly the same time, nearly two thousand years ago. The first donkey had told of a baby born in a stable, and shepherds and three wise men, and the second donkey had told of a boy from Nazareth who called the temple in Jerusalem his father's house. A very fine story, that, said the third donkey. I knew the temple well. I lived all my life in Jerusalem, mind you. When I knew it, it was more of a sort of covered market than a house of prayer. Nearly a riot there one day. A young preacher and his followers overturned all the stalls and threw everybody out. Got himself into a lot of trouble, that young preacher. He'd come into Jerusalem that morning, and two of his friends had come into the yard where I lived with another donkey. I was also young, didn't even have a saddle, never been ridden, a bit wild. Well, these two chaps took me to the young preacher and put some of their clothes across my back. I didn't like that, and started to play up. This young preacher put his hand on me, and, well, I don't know, it was all right, if you follow me. He got up on my back, and off we went. He must have been very famous. You never saw such crowds. They loved him. They threw their cloaks on the road and spread leafy branches so I could walk soft. They called him King and Prophet and Son of David. Fantastic noise! He dismounted at the temple and started the disturbance I told you about. Mind you, he must have had more enemies than friends. He was dead by the end of the week. Fantastic thing. 
The other two donkeys were now quite still and listening to every word. I don't know all that happened, said the third donkey, but it seemed that after he cleared the temple he stayed there and lots of sick people went to him and he healed them. He held prayer meetings and told wonderful stories. Of course, the priests and officials didn't like him and got nasty. But he wouldn't stop, so the Romans took a hand. There was a trial, and the young preacher was sentenced to death. I don't know what for. Couldn't have been for healing people or telling wonderful stories. They crucified him. I was there. Every donkey for miles around was busy that day. I must have carried dozens up to Golgotha. Terrible, frightening business. As he died, and it took a long time, the skies went dark. It was only three o'clock in the afternoon, and the earth shook and moved. I ran for my life. But that evening I had to go back there. I was hired by a rich man from a place called Arimathea to carry the young preacher's body to a sort of tomb cut in rock. Seems this rich man was a friend. Mind you, it was one of the preacher's friends who betrayed him for money. He committed suicide later, that one. I'm not surprised. Where was I? Oh, yes, this tomb. Know what the Romans did? They sealed it with a great stone and put a guard of soldiers there. Can't think why. There were no jewels or anything in the tomb, and the stone was huge, weighed tons. Well, I didn't do much the next day. Saturday it was. Odd sort of feeling in the city. Very silent. Uh, sort of sad. Very early the next morning, before dawn it was, my master untethered me and gave me over to two women. One rode on my back, the other led me. The one on my back was older. They both seemed full of grief. From the few words they said to each other, I gathered that they were both followers of the young preacher, and that both were named Mary. They'd heard about the rich man providing a tomb, and the great stone and guard set by the Romans, and they were going to pay their last respects. They weren't sure of the way, but I knew, so it was all right. Now said the third donkey to the other two. I don't ask you to believe this, but when we got there, there were no guards. The great stone was rolled to one side, and the tomb, which seemed filled with light, was empty. And that was Three Donkeys in Heaven. Read by Nick Martin.